Check. 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 One, two. Check. There, we there we go. Okay. you brought him something. Hope you brought the Lord something tonight. A little bit of praise and worship, all that kind of stuff. Check out my uh, sound as I'm doing this, Claudia. Um, but I know he brought you something. He brought you the fulfillment and the manifestation of every one of his promises. So since he brought that to you, as you're giving him praise and worship tonight, be sure and do some receiving as well. Amen. See your 
let's receive an offering tonight. What do you say? We've got offering baskets on either end of the platform here. If you're going to write out a check, write it out to Glory Bound. If you need a cash giving uh, offering envelope, raise up your hand. We'll get you one or point you to one there on, on uh, either side of the of the platform as well. If, you, if you're going to give by credit card, you'll need one of those offering envelopes. You can give by credit card on those. If you're watching on uh, Ustream or on our website, there's a donate button you can press. If you're watching on Facebook, you'll have to do it through PayPal, and that's paypal.me forward slash Glorybound Ministries. That's paypal.me forward slash Glorybound Ministries. Hallelujah. We got some things going on at church here, and uh, I've made this promise many times to you, but if you donate it, we will spend it. But we've got some good things going on. We're still working on the back. Uh, we're, we're working on an entrance to the multi-purpose auditorium that'll kind of be a separate entrance. We'll be able to do a lot more with that room in the future, like uh, coffee houses on Saturday nights and uh, just more things for the public by using the new entrance that we're building back over there. We're getting done with it, but uh, there's always a few things extra that we can do, so uh, we're kind of working on that as a project right now. That's in addition to paying the light bill, and the gas bill, and the water bill, and the other bills, and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? God is our provider. God is your provider. It's all going to get done. Amen? It's all going to be taken care of because He is your provider. He's this church's provider. He is the answerer of your prayers. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We've been preaching on unity a little bit lately. I wrote a song about unity a while ago, and uh, it basically just says that we're united in His name. We're one. You and I. He and I. You and Him. We're all one in the name of Jesus. That's an important thing to know, and it's important to put into practice. We're one body with Jesus Christ as the head. That's a good thing to be in this day and age. Amen.
He is holy. He's holy not so that you don't have to be. He's holy so that you get to be. He's not holy instead of you. His holiness includes you. Like I said before, we're one. Righteous in Him. Holy in Him. I'm going to introduce our assistant pastor, Mary Dorian, who is going to introduce tonight's speaker. You may be seated. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, our friend, Art Hirsch, is going to share with you what God has put on his heart for tonight. Um, Art has traveled a number of places around the world, and during his travels, he has seen many, many miracles and signs and wonders that God has done. So he's going to share with us tonight what God is wanting him to share and talk about. And so please welcome him. Come on up, Art. Yay. Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I uh, have been privileged to travel to uh, Guatemala and Zimbabwe, Africa, and India, uh, twice in India and three times in Zimbabwe, and seen <clears throat> God do some awesome things. Hallelujah. And you know, Mary, you shared about, is my volume about right? Is that okay? Okay. Uh, you shared about when you were in Poland and some harsh things were said to you and the Lord sent those farm animals to comfort you. And I had a similar experience that I can't resist sharing since it goes, it fits w with what you experienced, which was, I was, this was some years ago and involves nobody you've ever met, <laughs> but some harsh words were said to me and it kind of like a knife in your heart, you know? And so I said, well, I'm just going to go for a walk. I'll be back, you know? So I went for a walk and it was, and Satan was putting dark thoughts, you know, like if that's what people think about you, you know, what that sort of thing. And anyway, then I noticed that there was this yellow dog walking beside me. And I have no memory of how it came up and walked, but it was determined to walk with me. I was just walking down the sidewalk along the street, and all of a sudden there was this old yellow brown dog walking along me, with me. 
And every step it took looked like it might be its last. <laughs> In other words, it was really, really old. And so as I walked along with that dog, it kind of put all my problems in perspective. You know, it was like, <laughs> my problems are nothing compared to this poor fellow's problems, you know. And so as I walked along, all that hurt just melted out of me. And so then when I got uh, back to my house, I went in to get it some food. I thought, it, you know, I can hurry up and just grab a little food and give it some food. Because it couldn't go very far, I didn't think. But when, it came, when I came out of the house, it was gone. <laughs> so you tell me what, what that was, you know. But I know the Lord sent that dog to comfort me. Hallelujah. A few years ago, I was uh, talking to the youth pastor of the church we were going to in Florence, Alabama. And he was telling me about his Africa trip. He had been to, I think it was Ghana. And... Uh, the Lord gave him favor. He got to go in a hospital and pray for people in the hospital, and a bunch of people got healed. And then he was telling about he was praying for one, this one girl, and she fell on the ground and started writhing like a snake. And he knew what that was, so he cast out a spirit. And he said uh, that, you know, he, was, he hadn't really dealt with anything like that before. And I said, well, yeah, I got a lot of deliverance before. And he said, well, when was that? And I said, that was 1972. <laughs> and he laughed pretty hard because uh, he wasn't born yet. <laughs> and he said, you were experiencing deliverance before I was born. <laughs> and in 1972, my life was like circling the toilet bowl. <laughs> I had gotten involved in the occult, and it destroyed my life in a lot of ways, you know. Um, but... I came to a realization that I, something had gotten a hold of me that I couldn't uh, conquer on my own. And so I remember I was going, attending um, college in Terre Haute, Indiana, and at Rose Holman Institute. And there were two big lakes. I was walking around the one lake. And I find it, like I say, it had finally dawned on me that my situation was a bit desperate, that I couldn't overcome a lot of the things that were just dragging me down, mentally especially. And so I prayed to the Lord. I said, God, we both know what a coward I am. <laughs> and so if I promise you that I'll do what you tell me, I'll chicken out and won't do it. You, we both know that. But I said, Lord, if you'll give me the strength, if you'll give me the courage, I'll do whatever you tell me. And when I prayed that prayer, there was no chorus of angels. There wasn't a light from heaven. There was nothing uh, open like that. But as I look back to that moment, before that moment, my life was going this way. And after that moment, my life started going a totally different direction. Hallelujah. And I started hearing about these strange, charismatic home meetings where people were doing weird things like experiencing God and uh, speaking in tongues and things like that. And uh, in fact, um, the elder of the church I was attending's wife warned me about these meetings. And I thought, wow, that really sounds cool. I think I'm going to go check it out. <laughs> and so when I experienced the presence of the Lord, I'd, I had thought that, man, if you experience God, it's going to be like some weird thing, you know. But it wasn't like that at all. I felt more at home than I'd ever felt anywhere in my life because the one who made you knows you. And we are created for his presence. And so when we experience God's presence, it's what we're made for. It's like we have a God-shaped vacuum inside that's designed for him. Hallelujah. And so uh, I uh, was then confronted by one of the leaders of the group he, you know, have you been messing around with hypnotism, ESP, and yoga? That's how I remember it. He says, he just said the occult. But in any case, I said, how'd you know? And he said, it's written all over you. So I got set free of those things. And um, it took a little while. You know, it took a little while to get free of that. For one thing, I'd agreed with it. You know, you have to fall out of agreement with the devil. And I can't tell you... 
which spirit got in through which one of those things. And some people even think they can practice Christian yoga. Good luck on that, in my opinion, because all of those positions were designed to worship Hindu gods, AKA demons. For, that's what I believe anyway. Which, if you disagree with me on anything I say tonight, we can still be friends. <laughs> and in fact, uh, I am not saying that what I'm gonna share with you about how God led me has to be the way God leads you. And, but I do believe that the things the Lord shown me can benefit you. And if you get one thing out of tonight, what I have to share tonight, and I hope you get more than one, but if you get one thing that helps you along with your Christian life, why then that's a positive thing. Amen. And what I want to talk about tonight, and there are diverse operations of Holy Spirit, and none of us have experienced all the ways Holy Spirit works. But what I'm going to share with you about how God has worked in my life, I'm going to share those things because my life is the only one I've got to share about. I can tell you what he did for other people, but I can tell you what he did for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And... Um, what I want to talk about, I feel almost like a technician when I share these things because I want to talk about how. How do you do it? Because in my life, that was a question I had for some years. I heard messages encourage me, you can do it, you can do it. But I didn't really hear a lot of messages telling me, here's how you do it. And so that's what I want to share with you tonight. And I don't share my own experiences because I think I'm special. Quite the contrary. I think it's just the opposite, that what I, what I have experienced from God is available to everyone here and to, to all spirit-filled Christians, in fact. And I've told the people in Africa and India, to the best of my knowledge, I have not received any special gift that's unavailable to every one of you guys. And that's important because one thing I had to overcome, and some of you may be struggling with is, am I called to do these works? Am I called to a healing ministry, for example, or to prophesy, or other things that are on your heart? And the things that, you know, what God puts in our hearts is the way he wants us to move, for the most part. And um, so I had to become convinced that God wants to use me. And I'm hoping to convince you God wants to use you in all of these things too. And it's not only wants to, he's called you and equipped you and is equipping you. And you know, in it's not on your outline, 1 John 2, it talks about how we have an anointing and we don't need anyone to teach us. And so for a teacher, you know, we say, well, how's that jive with having a teacher? Well, the difference is how many years it takes. Because I'm gonna share with you what God led me through in over a 50 year span, but it doesn't have to take you 50 years. It, you can get it in 50 minutes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bill Johnson has said, it's difficult to expect the same fruit of the early church when we value a book they didn't have more than we value the Holy Spirit they did have. Now, do we need the Bible? You bet we do. Do we need the Holy Spirit? You bet we do. So it's not either or. You know, God is usually not the God of either or. <laughs> He's usually the God of both and. Hallelujah. And I uh, want to share about how to put the Bible into action in your life. How to active, interact with and activate the Word of God. Because I believe that the Bible works if we work it. In other words, we need to put the Bible into action in our lives. And that's what I, how, the way to do that is what I want to talk about tonight. And people say, I believe the Bible from cover to cover. I believe it's the word of God. Well, yes, that's a start. And this is a bit subtle. I hope you can get this. <laughs> There's a big difference between, between believing that the Bible is the word of God and believing what the Bible says. 
I know there shouldn't be. It's a contradiction. But as human beings, we can truly believe that the Bible is the word of God and yet not believe some things it says. <laughs> and the Bible's got a lot to say. For example, Ephesians 2, 6 says that um, we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above all power and authority, and raised up together, made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ, it says. Now, when I first learned of that scripture, that the Bible says we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ above all authority, it was, it, I couldn't reconcile that with my experience because my experience was the Bible says I'm up here, but my experience is down here. And it's what I called the gap. <laughs> and I thought, how do, how do I deal with that? And so what I've learned about that is that our position in Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And our spirit man is uh, the conduit to that reality of the authority in Christ. But our experience may be down here. And we may be tempted to limit the word of God down to our experience. And I believe that is a possibly fatal mistake. It's a big mistake. On the other hand, I can stand with the word against my own experience and say, God, I believe your word, no matter what my experience. God be found true, though every man a liar, even my own experience. Amen. And if we can do that, we can seek to draw our experience up to the word. And that's what I b believe God has called us to do. Our position in Christ is where we stand positionally and legally our experience, we're learning how to put that into, into action in our life. And so the fact that we're not there yet isn't something to be condemned about because it's a process. The Christian life is a process. Hallelujah. So we can, for years, I believed that the Bible was the word of God. But I didn't believe Ephesians 2, 6 particularly because I really hadn't paid that much attention to it, that our position is seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ. So I hope that gives you, and there are lots of other things. The Bible says we can fill, be filled up to all the fullness of God. That's, that's something huge. <laughs> Amen. Plus, there's the story about the man riding the bicycle across Niagara Falls on a cable. And he says, do you believe I can, to a bystander, do you believe I can ride this bicycle across Niagara Falls? And the guy said, yeah, I think, so. yeah. Do you really believe it? Do you believe I can ride this bicycle across Niagara Falls? Yeah, I do. Hop on then. <laughs> That's a different matter, isn't it? When, when, you have, when you hop on the bicycle. That's faith. The first part is mental assent. And I think many times we uh, underestimate what faith requires. We underestimate and we overestimate what the faith in our heart, own heart, in, in a way. And again, it's not a thing to be condemned about. It's just if we need our faith level to rise up further till we receive from God what we need, why, it's a process again. Hallelujah. So it's not, not something to be condemned about. There's also what I've called active submission. And I have verified through my own experience that you can sit around on the porch for years waiting for God when in reality God's waiting on you. God's waiting for you. And if we say, well, God has called me to go to Africa and sit on the porch and wait for it to happen, we may be waiting a while. We have to, you know, put some action into our prayers. And we don't necessarily have to take big steps at first. We, if we take small steps, I, uh, in praying for the sick, for some years, I would go down to, no, I don't know about years, but for some period of time, go down to Walmart and look for somebody to pray for and kind of circle around, and they would start wondering what I was up to. <laughs> and I didn't have enough courage to go say, can I pray for you? <laughs> uh, 
So again, I was kind of waiting on God to give me the courage, and God was waiting on me to step out, I think. And uh, we can see that about Moses. If you go back into Exodus, and I haven't put the reference, but you can look it up, that where Moses, he said, I must turn aside to see this great sight of the, why this bush burns and is not consumed. And it says that when he turned aside, the Lord spoke to him out of the burning bush. So in other words, when he put some action into his curiosity was when God spoke to him. And so you and I, we have to put some action into some of the things we're seeing from God to encounter God. And like I say, that's active submission. And, you know, I think about Todd Bentley. His mother died deaf, and so he had a special place in his heart for the deaf. And he literally, and it's hard to imagine doing this, although I guess if you're out preaching regularly, maybe you could picture it. But he literally prayed for a 1,000 deaf, deaf people and saw no improvement whatsoever. He literally prayed for a 1,000 deaf people before one got a tiny bit better. And when that happened, instead of being discouraged, it was like gasoline on the fire to go for more. And I used to pray for the sick, and they'd get a tiny bit better, and I'd go away discouraged. And now I know what I want to share with you guys, that if they get a tiny bit better, there's a connection to heaven, and all you have to do is press in and keep praying and keep at it, and they'll get completely healed. Amen. Hallelujah. So if I pray for somebody and they get a tiny bit better, it's like gasoline on the fire. I try to put, put that to heart, you know. Let it be like gasoline on the fire, that all we have to do is go for it, and they'll get completely healed. And I've, I've seen hundreds and hundreds and even thousands healed, most of them not the first time I prayed. I would guess, it's a guess, I would guess maybe 20% were completely healed the first time I prayed. And some of them, there was no change the first time, no change, change the second time, and a few, no change the fourth or the fifth time, and they still got healed, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. One thing we also have to settle in our hearts is God, does God want us sick? Nope. If that is a question in our mind, then we can't pray effectively if we think God might want somebody sick. The reality is God hates all sickness. He hates it. He, and sickness of the body is disease, or sickness we call it. Sickness of the soul is called sin. And it's really the same thing in different realms. And salvation if you've studied the Greek word sozo, it's an all-inclusive word, the word, and that's the word for salvation. Salvation includes healing of the body and the soul. And that's proven in Matthew 8, 16 and 17. And uh, it says, Now when evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were ill. This happened so that what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled. He himself took our illnesses and carried away our diseases. And that's quoting Isaiah 53, verse 5. And back in Isaiah, in the Hebrew, the Hebrew word for diseases there could be translated infirmities or weaknesses. It, it could be either one. But the Greek word here in Matthew 8 refers to physical sickness and disease so that proves beyond any reasonable doubt that healing is in the atonement in other words jesus prayed the price for your physical healing not just your spiritual healing and you know people don't usually go in a store and pay for something and don't intend to receive it and not intend to receive it <laughs> that, that would be pretty crazy and so jesus paid the price so he wants us to have it Amen? Amen. Alexander Dowie, uh, some of you may have heard of, he was the one whom John G. Lake learned about healing from in Zion, Illinois. He founded Zion, Illinois as a 
Center for Healing, really. And over a period of years, he took in 6,000 terminally ill people, taught them that the illness was not from God, they didn't have to gracefully receive it from God, that it was an enemy that they needed to fight, and they could employ the word of God to fight it. And out of those 6,000 terminally ill patients, he lost six, which means 5,994 roughly were healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that fabulous? And John G. Lake, you know, went on to Spokane, Washington, and Portland, Oregon, and saw thousands and thousands healed. They would have parades of, of healing parades in those cities where they would have the deaf float and the crippled float. It's incredible. We look for, and, you know, we hear uh, and believe God wants to do more now than he did back then. Amen. And Portland was declared the, by the president the healthiest city in America at that time. Hallelujah. When we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a healing prayer because there's no sickness or disease in heaven. <laughs> so, and where it says it there, thy will be done as it is in heaven. That proves there's not two wills, one for heaven and one for earth. That God has one will for heaven and earth. And his will is the same. The difference is his will is done perfectly in heaven, and it's not yet done perfectly on earth. And it's our job as enforcers of, um, our job as enforcers, we're to enforce the word of God through our faith. Hallelujah. And the word come there, in thy kingdom come, you know, that we have this phrase, you know, in, in uh, the English language, until kingdom come, you know, like until the cows come home, some indefinite time in the future. And that's wrong. And I had felt that was wrong. And Claudia was teaching a few, a month ago or so about this passage. Um, and I looked it up in my Strong's. And the word for come there is erkamahi, is the Greek word. And it is only used in present tense or a past imperfect tense. If the Greeks wanted to say come in the future, there's a different Greek word they used. So when we say thy kingdom come, it's not a prayer for it to come in the future. It's a prayer of commanding for it to come now. Thy kingdom come right now. Come in my heart. Come in this, the person I'm praying for is heart and body and soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First thing I want to talk about that I felt the Lord had dealt, one thing uh, that the Lord's dealt with me about over the years is the matter of the tongue. The matter of getting certain, first off, getting certain things out of my language. And the Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life. We can speak death or we can speak life. And the Bible says, choose life. I'll bet another context. And once I started understanding about confession and looked in the Bible, I was amazed about how many scriptures there are. And um, in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, it, and this, I like, this is one of about a handful of scriptures that I really liked in the King James, the old King James. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith, whatsoever he says. Notice it does not say he'll have what he wants. It does not say he'll have what he needs. It says he'll have what he says. So when I saw that, I thought, wow, that's Jesus said, I'll have what I say. <laughs> and so if I go around saying, oh, my, it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> I just get sicker and, you know, all the negative things that we can say. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. <laughs> I've heard people say that a lot, you know. If I go around saying those things, according to what Jesus said, I'm prophesying my future. Wow. So I made a real effort to cut that things out of my language, to never say my sickness, my cold. It's not my sickness. 
It's the devil's sickness. Now, if you go to the doctor and he asks you what's wrong with you, you can tell him. You know, we don't have to be ridiculous. But we can find ways, instead of saying, I have a cold, we could say amongst ourselves for sure, I'm being attacked by a cold. You know, because that's just a fact. We don't deny the existence of sickness. We just deny its right to stay. Amen. Amen. So I made a real effort to change my speech, to quit saying negative things, to quit claiming things that, were, that I didn't want in my life, and to start confessing what God says. And God says some things. <laughs> and um, as one as person put it, those who say they can and those who say they can't are both right. Oh, wow. That gets my attention. And like if you, like I said, if you look through Proverbs 18, you'll find scripture after scripture about the tongue. And I'll give you some other scriptures too here in a minute. In Proverbs 6 too, it says, if you've been snared with the words of your mouth and have been caught by the words of your mouth. And Proverbs 18, 7, a fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are the snare of his soul. And like it says in James, brethren, these things ought not to be so. <laughs> so we need to quit saying negative things. Hallelujah. And in fact, it says in Hebrews 3.1 that Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Now, that means a couple things. It, but one thing I believe it means is that Jesus' job as high priest of our confession is to take our confession into the Father and present it to the Father for the Father to approve. And so if my confession is, no luck except bad luck, sinker and sinker, the devil's doing this to me, if that's my confession, I'm not giving Jesus much to work with. But if I confess what God says about me, then I'm giving Jesus some, something to work with. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4.14 says, let us hold fast our confession. Hallelujah. You can read the complete verse. So I'm maintaining that if you take a tape, here's it, shows my age. <laughs> I started to say tape recorder, and I put that in the notes. You take a digital voice recorder <laughs> and carry it around with you and record what you're saying. In five years, ten years, you'll be living what you're saying. That's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. So like I say, I made a, a concerted, and do I mess up sometimes? Oh, yeah. And as, again, you don't feel condemned. You just say, Lord, I just played the blood over that. I renounce that. I don't want that negative thing to happen to me or anyone else and break its power in the name of Jesus and go on. Amen. Faith comes by hearing God's word. Romans 10, 17. Now, we've taken that to mean faith comes by hearing someone preach the word. And I hope faith is coming tonight. Amen. I believe it. But let me tell you that the number one person for you to receive faith from speaking God's word isn't me. It's you. Because if you believe it all in the word of God and start speaking it, your ears hear it coming out of your mouth, and your ears hear the faith, and so it, it just gets greater and greater and greater until I believe it, I receive it, I'm walking in it in Jesus' name. And you can get stronger and stronger in faith, and it, it works. With the negative, we call it a vicious circle, but I would call this a precious circle, hallelujah. A circle of victory, maybe, is a better term, Hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. And we're not talking about vain repetitions. We're not talking about, he'll, you know, just saying many words. Because Jesus, you know, he said That's, that doesn't work. But the Bible does say in Jeremiah 23, 29, that the Bible, the word of God is a hammer against a rock. So what I'm suggesting is find a verse that fits your situation and that resonates with your spirit. And you confess it as long as it resonates with your spirit. And then when, it, when that one quits resonating, find another one. <laughs> it's pretty simple. As long as it's power, powerful, 
use it. And when it's not, ask the Lord for a different scripture. And I learned that the Bible is a um, book of confessions. Hallelujah. And it's not presumption. It is faith, not presumption, to do what Jesus said. Amen. And Jesus said we could speak to mountains. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And one way I learned some of this was from, and I'm going to tell you, oh, I didn't tell you about, I, started, I somehow skipped over the thing about uh, Andrew Walmack. Andrew Walmack, you know, it, I, f I appreciate his telling about his mistakes. And he told about how in the early days of his ministry, he prayed for a man who had a crossed eye. And he prayed for it and straightened right out. And he was just starting at it, and he said, wow, I don't believe it. And as soon as he said that, the eye went, look, back, cross back again. And no matter how much he prayed, he could never get it to straighten out again. Gulp. So with God, I don't believe it needs to be not part, you know, not part of our vocabulary. Amen. Amen. That gets my attention. <laughs> And I learned about um, confessions from a book by uh, Charles Capps. I couldn't find my physical copy. <laughs> the Tongue, a Creative Force, which the title sounds a bit strange, but it's a fabulous book. But actually, the best part of the book uh, for me was in the back, he had faith capsules, he called them, C-A-P-P-S-U-L-E-S, -E little play on words. And here's a couple of them. I am far from oppression, and fear does not come nigh to me. Isaiah 54, 14. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, for my righteousness is of the, of the Lord. For, but whatever I do will prosper, for I'm like a tree that's planted by rivers of water. Isaiah 54, 17, Psalms 1, 3. I am delivered from the easel, evils of this present world, for it is the will of God. Galatians 1.4. So I read these, and he's got several pages of them. And, I, and it, it, I realized the Bible is a book of confessions. I can come to this, the Bible and confess every positive part of it about my life. And, and so that was a big step for me. And um, I also learned that I could personalize it. You can see how Charles Capps did it. He put I in there and applied it to himself. And then later I learned another step, which is combining it with Romans 4.17, where it says God calls those things that do not exist into existence or calls those things that be not as though they were. <clears throat> and I realized that if I'm submitted to God, I can take scriptures I don't even qualify for and call myself qualifying, and then call the result in for, for myself, too. So I can take, that means I can take the whole Bible, <laughs> even the parts that I haven't, you know, qualified for yet, and I can say, I, like, the meek shall inherit the earth. You know, if I need to in, need that scripture, I can say, Lord, I call myself meek. <laughs> and I'm submitted to God. I can believe him to do it. Amen. Amen. So that, those things kind of opened up the, the ability to confess the Bible for me. And then I heard a teaching about Matthew 18, 18. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. That that means that whatever you or I on earth put up with from Satan, Jesus will sit up in heaven and put up with it as long as you and I do. And whatever we don't put up with from Satan, Jesus won't put up with it either. So I heard that teaching, and a little while later, I was riding in the car. I had to go to Indianapolis, Indiana, to deliver a package to the airport to be shipped out to Baltimore. Anyway, on the way, I started getting stomach flu. And I had rebuked stomach flu. I had prayed against it when it attacked me before, and I didn't touch it. And so I was resigned that I'd be sick a few days, and then I'd get over it. Hallelujah. But I was riding back after the airport, and that teaching about Matthew 18, 
flipped into my brain that I don't have to put up with stomach flu. So I had a little not put up with it hallelujah fest for about 10 minutes. I don't put up with stomach flu. I don't put up with this in the name of Jesus. And, you know, you don't tell, like the devil's like a little dog that follows you to the bus station. You don't say, oh, doggy, please go home. It's not going to go. Oh, doggy, go on home, please. No, you say, go home. And so I didn't put up with stomach flu, and after 10 minutes of my little not put up with it fest, it was 90% gone. And the next morning, it was 99% gone. Hallelujah. And so I learned, you really don't have to put up with the devil. Hallelujah. And then I learned about... Um, about um, forcing the word of God into the pain. And I shared before about, here about how I'd, had, I'd uh, had victory over regular headaches. I learned I could rebuke those, and they left. But sin I had these sinus headaches for 20 years. And so once I learned about forcing the word of God into the pain, I started force when I If I got a sinus headache, which I did, I would get in my car and turn the heat way up and drive and force healed by the stripes of Jesus into the pain. And after doing that about a month, it left. And that was um, 11 years ago, and I've not had one since. A couple times I could feel him trying to creep back, and I would just not put up with it, force the word of God into it, confess the word, and would leave. So when I learned these things, I started applying them to if I would get attacked by a cold or flu. And I found that flu is a spirit. Yeah, it's a virus. There are germs. I'm not denying any of that. But there's a spiritual component because many, many times I, it would the symptoms would try to come on, and I, oh, yeah, I would nip it in the bud. I'd heard teaching about that too. You don't wait till it gets a hold of you. When it first starts is when you draw the line in the sand and say, I don't put up with it. I don't put up with throat tickles. I don't put up with cough. I don't put up with it. And I would do that and use these tools that I share with you. And many times I had victory. It, the symptoms would just leave. And they kind of gave up after a little bit. Did, was it 100%? No, it wasn't. Sometimes your faith is up and sometimes it's down. And so uh, sometimes I had to recover naturally. But many times I had victory over it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be just one verse of scripture away from your healing. It doesn't take uh, pages and pages of scripture. One verse of scripture has the power to change our circumstances. Hallelujah. And another verse that's not in your outline is Hebrews 1.3, where it says, he upholds all things by the word of his power. And, you know, if we say the state of New Mexico, we're not excluding Santa Fe. If we say the state of New Mexico, it includes all of the state of New Mexico. And so when God says he upholds things by the word of his power, it includes all of his power. In other words, all of God's power is available through his word. Hallelujah. And, you know, our, that's not our experience necessarily. But if we start believing what God says more and more, we can experience more and more. Hallelujah. And we don't have to be condemned. Hallelujah. Norval Hayes, who I appreciate and who I got some of these, learned some of these teachings from. And by the way, tonight, to the best of my knowledge, I'm only going to share things that I have personally walked out in my own life. It's not just something I read in a book or heard in a message, but I've experienced and seen God do these things. And Norval Hayes told about being in Hawaii at a full gospel business pants meeting. And they said to him, there's a man who would like you to counsel with him. And Norval said, okay. And so the guy said, um, um, I'm a miserable human being. I haven't worked in two years. The big, he owned equipment over in Maui. And he said, nobody has called me for my equipment. The big companies, it was for pineapple harvesting. Nobody calls me. And so I'm $15,000 in debt to my friends just to keep food, little food on the table. I, I'm a desperate human being. And Norval said, he said, can you help me? And Norval said, if you'll do what I tell you. 
And the guy said, I'm a desperate human being. What you tell me, I will do. And Norval said, well, let me ask you a couple questions. And the guy said, okay. One, do you worship God? And the guy said, well, I go to church. And Norval said, that's good. That's where you get trained. But let me ask you this. Do you alone, just you, or you and your wife, do you ever worship God at home, just yourself, or you and your wife? Do you do that? And the man said, no, I don't. Norval said, okay, let me ask you another question. Do you speak to mountains? Do you talk to mountains? And the guy said, huh? And Norval said, that means no. <laughs> and so Norval said, here's your problem. You're not worshiping God, and you're not speaking your mountains. <laughs> and so he taught him about Psalm 112 that says, praise the Lord. How blessed is the man who fears, which means revere or worships God, the Lord. And verse 3, wealth and riches are in his house. And there's other good blessings. His seed is gener uh, are mighty on earth. His descendants are mighty on earth, verse 2. And so he said, Norval told him, you need to worship God first. That means not second. <laughs> and he said, you don't have to set aside every day you're going to worship him at 3 p.m. Un under the oak tree because there will come a day when you can't, and it will break your cycle. So you need to allow yourself some flexibility. And he said, you need to speak to your mountains. Whatever mountain is, is hindering you, you need to speak to it to be removed. Jesus said to speak to your mountains, but he said, my people want to talk to me about their mountains instead of speaking to their mountains about me. And he said, the third thing you do is to call things that be not as though they were. And for him, it was this. Big companies, I'm talking to you. Call me with big orders. In the name of Jesus, big corporations, call me with big orders. And so the fellow said, I will do it. Thank you very much. And he, w he left. And Norval went back to uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. And a year later, Norval was at the Full Gospel Businessman's. And they said, uh, this man from Maui is going to give a testimony. And he looked kind of familiar, Norval said. He hadn't seen him in a year. And so the guy came up and told the story about the fit, you know, hadn't worked in two years, 15,000 in debt to his friends and so on. And he said, when Norval told me about these things, he said, I went home determined to do them. And he said, I did, as I did them, things got tighter than ever before. For five, I think it was five months, I believe it was. And he said, I had made up my mind I was not going to back off. I was not going to quit no matter what. And Orville said, that's why it worked. And then one day he got a call from a big pineapple company that said, something happened. We need your help. And Orville said, when you're worshiping God, speaking to your mountains, and calling those things that be not as though they were, something's always going to happen to your benefit. And so... The guy went to meet with them. They offered him six weeks of work for him and his equipment for $60,000, I believe it was. And he said, I think I'll accept that. And after five weeks of work, they came to him and said, you're working hard, another secret. You're doing a good job. We're, we want you another contract for six weeks of work and uh, $60,000. And, and what the guy actually said was, <laughs> I'm in my second contract, I have $45,000 in the bank, and I'm here to tell you, if Norval Hayes tells you something, for God's sake, believe it. That's what he said. <laughs> so I heard that, and I thought, that's good enough for me. I'm going to start doing that. So I determined that I, every day I was going to worship the Lord for something like an hour, which I had to figure out how to do that because... <laughs> How do you worship the Lord for an hour a day, you know? And so I learned about Jehovah Jaffa, Jehovah Ropha, Jehovah Makadesh, Jehovah Shama, And I could worship God and worship Jesus as all these things. And so I started commanding corporations to call me. And I'd wanted to do, have my own consulting business for years. And within a very short time of me doing these, that, I think in just a couple weeks, I had three full-time contracts. Hallelujah. And I thought, 
I can't just ignore this. I have to quit my job and go for it. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> now, as you'll see in my notes down, we, it takes a lot of believing to make up for stupid business decisions. And I know that because I've made some stupid <laughs> business <laughs> decisions. And one of them was accepting three full-time contracts. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I should have reviewed them and said, I want this one. <laughs> Or something like that, you know, because I was like a juggler. But, hallelujah. So I ended up um, working with my uh, consulting company. And things went along pretty well until um, one of my, my main clients couldn't pay me. Because my part of the system worked, but they could. it was in Boston. It was a cellular... Uh, some cell equipment. They could never get their system to work. And so they would pay me a little bit each month. And I learned that I had borrowed the money, $67,000 on my credit cards, to buy the parts to build this equipment that was out in Boston. And I learned, I didn't know this, it's stupid me, that if you miss a credit card payment or two, they help you by jacking your rates up to 36% or whatever it was. <laughs> and so I found, my, found myself where the amount of money they paid me for the work just went to make the payment that month, you know. And so after a few months, I found myself in a real pinch. And so I really then s said, I'm going to worship the Lord an hour a day, speak to this mountain of debt, and call forth the solution. And... Um, the Lord brought it about. It took a little while. And I learned about consumer credit counseling, that you can set that up where you reduce the interest rates and uh, work with you to get out of debt. Hallelujah. And so after a few years, I was beginning to see just a little bit of light at the tunnel. And I found out that my speaking to that mountain of debt, even though I could only see a tiny little bit of coming down, it, Inside, the mountain was being hollowed out, and one day, the whole mountain collapsed, and I was debt-free. Hallelujah. And in the process, I learned about the faith pledge. And you may say, well, this isn't the highest way of interacting with God about this, and you're probably right. But I can tell you that God can honor this, because I experienced it with $1,000, $3,000, and $11,000 where I said to God, God, if you'll send me $1,000, I started with $1,000, out of the blue, above the regular what I'm receiving, I will give you X percent of it. Now, if you say something like that to God, you better do it. And the guy, a guy who owned me money from years before that I'd given all hope uh, of ever seeing, Sent me the money, $1,000, 1100 I think it was, actually. And when I wrote this down, I was remembering the 3000 I thought, seems like there was 3000 I couldn't remember what it was. Then I remembered a uh, day before yesterday. It was the IRS. <laughs> I had said, God, send me 3000 And God used the IRS to send me $3,000. Right. Hallelujah. God can even use the IRS. And that's a story of its own that I don't have time to go into. And then there was the 11,000, which then led to the complete collapse of that mountain of debt. And I found myself completely out of debt. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So I don't know, maybe somebody needs that tonight. Now I want to tell you real quick, I am going to be closing here before too long. Three great secrets. I put secrets in quote because they're not secret <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And they never really were. One is commanding prayer. To pray like Jesus prayed. He didn't say, oh, Father, please heal this person. In fact, the only place in the whole Bible where you can ever find anybody saying, God, please heal this person, that I know of, was Elijah when he had first prayed, the Syrian army had surrounded him. And he prayed, God, please make them blind. And God made them blind. And then after they um, had some, sort of surrendered, he led them away. He said, God, please restore their sight. 
And that's, I would say, is a special case. That's the only place in the whole Bible that I know of that anybody ever prayed, God, please heal this person. Instead, Jesus said, arise and walk, take up your bed, little girl, arise, and so forth. Hallelujah. And Oral Roberts was healed by commanding prayer when he had, was 17 years old and was dying with, I believe, tuberculosis. It was tuberculosis. And his family, many people prayed for him, but his family took him to a tent meeting where the evangelist prayed a commanding prayer of healing, and he was healed. Hallelujah. So commanding prayer works. And in Acts, there are two examples where the disciples prayed commanding healing prayers also. Hallelujah. The second secret, and I didn't know this for years, you can pray more than once. In other words, I can pray for you for something and then have you check it, which is an act of faith of its own, the next secret. And then I can pray again. And I didn't know that for years. I didn't do it because I didn't know you could do it. And like I said earlier, most of the people I've seen, of the thousands, hundreds and hundreds, literally thousands of people that I've seen healed, most of them were healed on second, third, fourth, fifth prayer, something like that. Hallelujah. And then checking their bodies to see what happened is an act of faith. Because for one thing, it shows God that we expect something to happen. Amen? <coughs> and in fact, Marcus Gutierrez, who has spoke here um, a while back, has told me he doesn't really pray for people here in the United States anymore. And I understand why. Because the shields go up. You mentioned Jesus or healing and the shields go up. Instead, what he's doing, and I haven't really quite gotten up the nerve to do this much, just a little bit so far, is instead talk to somebody what their problem is and say, you're getting healed, check it. He says, I just haven't checked it. And then after they get healed, they say, what was it that healed me? <laughs> and the, his one friend, he tried talking to him about Jesus, and the guy wouldn't receive it. And so he said, well, your knee's getting better. And the guy checked it, and his knee got healed. And the guy said, how did I get healed? Who, who healed me? And he said, well, it's that Jesus you didn't want to hear about. <laughs> so anyway. Um, you are heaven's treasury because you have heaven's treasure inside of you. His name is Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and the power of God. He is the power of God. Hallelujah. And I watched this Heidi Baker video, and I learned to love Holy Spirit because I was so moved by this video of her up at Toronto that I s said to Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I love you so much because I realized that he is the glory and he is the presence and I love the glory and I love the presence and want more of each of those. And so I realized I love him, that loving those, the glory is loving Holy Spirit. And when I said that to him, it was like, you're my Holy Spirit, because I will defend you to the death, which is stupid, because like he needs my defense, you know. <laughs> he can take care of himself. But <laughs> feeling that way of a commitment to Holy Spirit, that it's like I'm married to Holy Spirit in a way, you know. We're, we're, he's ours, and we're his, and he loves us, and we love him. When I said that, waves of glory and power swept over me. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you about loving Holy Spirit. And when I've seen all these people healed, it just makes me love him all the more. Because I don't know if we have that picture of that little girl in Africa. Um, maybe not. But there was a little girl who her mother said she had never walked before. And a couple of the, I was encouraging the African pastors to step out in faith. And so they were praying for the girl, and I went over and agreed with them. And she took off walking around 60 people and walked around the group twice. And uh, how could you not love Holy Spirit when he does something like that? Hallelujah. 
And so I've learned that I love him. And I've come to realize, too, that as our hearts line up with God's heart, he can work through us. He can work through us more. Because it talks about faith working through love. And so if I don't love what God loves, if I love something God hates, God can't work through that love. And if I hate something God loves, he can't work through that either. And so if we love what he loves, which is people, health, healing, joy, victory, abundance, there's no poverty in heaven either, by the way. If we love what God loves and love his people, then he empowers our love. He empowers our love to see more people healed and more people delivered. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is it okay if I pray for a couple people here? Okay. Okay. I have, one way I found, particularly in the beginning, was leg lengthening. You can pray for people's legs to grow out, and usually they do. Occasionally, you find somebody where it doesn't happen, and you don't know why. You know, God doesn't tell you, and it's not their fault. We're not pointing fingers. In fact, this one lady I prayed for, whose leg was shorter than the other and did not grow out, I told her, I'm sorry, uh, Jesus still loves you. And she said, well, you can pray for my hand. My hand hurt, really hurts. And so I prayed for her hand. It was instantly healed. And she kept saying, I can't, and I'm sure the Lord forgive her. This wasn't a good confession, but I can't believe Jesus healed my hand. I can't believe Jesus healed my hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love it when people are shocked when God heals them. I love it. I absolutely love it. Hallelujah. Well, Oh, I'm starting. One gateway to the supernatural realm for praying for healing is leg lengthening. Because 90 some percent of the time, you pray for leg lengthening and boop, out it comes. Hallelujah. And so that's one way I have used, particularly in the beginning, to get people healed was to first check their legs and then pray for that. And I don't know if you have seen that, but it's great to see miracles. There's nothing like seeing miracles. Because Jesus said, you believe that what he says will come to pass. And one way, the best way, I think, to come to believe what you say will come to pass is to see it happen. And hallelujah. So could I pray for you, brother? Okay. Come on. you mind coming up front here? I have a specific prayer request, if I can just do that. Okay. Can I pray for your legs here first, maybe? Sure. Or second? And I want people to be able to see it. So let's do this first, then we'll do the prayer requests. And about 80% have one leg longer than the other. You're welcome to come up and see if you want, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, let me get my mask. Okay. So can you hold your legs, sit real back real square with your hips real square, and then just hold your legs straight out. Okay, let's bring them, yeah. Okay, I think there's about a quarter of, an inch, quarter of an inch. Can you see it? Okay, in the name of Jesus, the name of Je here it comes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Here it came. <laughs> no trumpets, just God did it. Do you see that? I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank we give you the glory, Jesus. What's your prayer request, brother? Uh, I just want to be freed from addiction. I, I'm confessing my addiction to alcohol, my addiction to marijuana, and um, I'm also experiencing idle talk, and I just want a sober mind so okay. bad. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just all agree. What's your first name, brother, if you want? Eric. Eric. Lord, we just lift up Eric. Lord, you want these things for him more than he even wants them for himself. And Lord, you want to replace. You're, you're the original replacement therapy. You want to replace all these fake things, all these counterfeits for the joy of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord bubble up. We break addiction in the name of Jesus. We declare our brother Eric free from alcohol or drugs or anything that's hindering him. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say spring forth, O well. Spring forth, O well, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Help him change the idle talk part. Lord, help him put words to life. 
to speak words of life and power and joy and peace. Amen. Lord, we just speak for his eyes to refocus on your kingdom and for uh, walking forward in your kingdom for our brother. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You know, um, you can receive the Holy Spirit. Have you received Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay, good. Good. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you, brother. Well, I don't usually ask for volunteers. I learned in, when I was in Russia, let the Holy Spirit show you how to pick out so you don't pick out one of those few people who can't possibly, uh, who, who doesn't get healed for whatever reason. But uh, is there anyone else who would like to come up and get prayed for? Do you want to come up, brother? Yeah? Okay. I guess I didn't ask for volunteers after all. <laughs> What's your first name? My name is Jordan. Jordan. Nice yes, to meet sir. you, Jordan. Thank you. Okay, sit back real square. Okay. And just hold your legs up if you can. And let's check that. Oh, good. Oh, I love it. Oh, wait a minute. I see. Yeah. Okay, look at that. Isn't that great? Hallelujah. The bottom part's about, what, half an inch. I've seen them grow out about that far. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes, amen. Same length in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it came out a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Je oh, here it comes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Little by little, it's coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's pretty close right there, brother. Can you see that? Yes, I could. Did you feel it? I couldn't feel okay. it, but I could see it. <laughs> okay. okay. It was amazing. The Lord just did a miracle for you, brother. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, You've got the same power I do. We've got the same one. His name's Holy Spirit. His name's Holy Spirit. Anything I can pray for you, brother? Yeah, um, I would like to have you pray for, uh, uh, sometimes I get a little bit of anxiety, especially speaking in front of other people. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I've had this thing, and I've been praying against it for a long time, uh, but it goes back to my, early early childhood and uh, it seems to be something that is been extremely difficult to um, uh, to defeat uh, so okay well, Lord we just all agree for Jordan you can we just pray for him father surround him with your love perfect love casts out fear Lord let him know how much you love him that you accept him as your child he is accepted in the beloved amen Amen. All anxiety, go. Be gone right now from Jordan. Release him right now in Jesus' mighty name. Peace. Peace of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Um, can I say something else? Um, <clears throat> so uh, this last Sunday, uh, I was here, and um, actually I got word that morning that uh, my father was uh, battling COVID pneumonia and <clears throat> it was pretty severe uh, that morning and I ha we had gotten word that it was uh, getting pretty severe the night before um, but God had revealed to me through a prayer that I had prayed for my folks uh, you know uh, about three weeks prior because my mother came down with it first and I started praying for them and when I <laughs> God likes to <laughs> he likes to he allows me to flip to a random page in the Bible with faith, and I get answers immediately. And now, when I, and I pray before, and I was taught to do this by Chuck Missler, if anybody knows who he is. He's, he will hurt your brain. He is so smart. Um, and, uh, and, but, and, but it's not really the man, right, that you idol. It's God works through him, and it's amazing. But anyways, I, I would put my hand on my Bible and have things revealed. Well, I was praying for my folks, and I said, let my hand... On this, uh, lay on this Bible as if I'm laying hands on my, my parents. And so <clears throat> I, I, I was praying, and I said, you know what, Lord? I, I bet you got something for me. And I smiled internally, and, and I think even physically. I, I, I said, I bet you have a message for me. And I took my hand off my Bible. And sure enough, this is like now the eighth time in a row this, this happens, right? And it says, the storm at sea. And 
me and my folks have been, you know, it's, that's a deeper story, but we're focused on this coming storm, this coming storm. We keep on getting these messages prophetically. And I, for the first time, I read Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27 is where Paul is on his way to Rome under guard on the ship. And he's in the storm, and they all think they're going to die. And he says, don't be afraid because, uh, uh, you know, he, he s- talks about how the angel came to him and said, you're going to stand before Caesar. And uh, several months ago, I brought my folks here, and God stood them up through Mary, right, um, and gave them a word. And the word, especially that she gave my dad, uh, was a confirmation prophecy that he's received three times now, okay? And God also told him, uh, uh, you know, you're not done yet, right? Through Mary, you're not done yet. Well, that morning, I, I realized that, hey, I don't have to be worried. I don't have to rush to El Paso because he's getting put in the hospital. I don't have to fear, and I I talked to my mother, and, and I calmed her down and said, we don't have anything. We know we're going to make it through this because we still have to stand before, or he has to stand before Caesar and do what he's, he's been promised. And that was amazing, and I'm so sorry if your hand's getting tired, but, I, and I can hold that if you want. But you do need to make it brief, so. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me try and make it as brief as possible because it is really amazing. Um, so I came here in faith thinking, I don't have anything to worry about, and I'm going to get instruction when I come here. The first half of the, the sermon was um, about going out in our authority, especially with people regarding COVID. And it was like, wow, okay. Then I remembered the scripture to have the elders pray for the sick. So I got up and I had the elders pray for my dad. And, and one of the ladies, and I don't know her name, she kept on saying, you've got to watch this, this uh, COVID prayer by Ken Fish, Ken Fish, Ken Fish, over and over. And I, I, now I'm, I'm out of church. I'm on my way home. And I, and I type up Ken Fish COVID prayer, and there's a bunch of videos. I choose one. I'm starting to watch it. I'm like, wow, i got to send this to my mother right now because he was on his way to the ER, and they were saying he could slip away. They had to rush him by ambulance. His oxygen levels were so low, he could pass away. And, um, uh, and, and now at that moment when I was going to send it to her, I get a message from her, and it's a link. I open up the link. It's the same video. Wow. Okay. Wow. And the video explains that these that the word in Psalms 91 6, that the word destruction, the root Hebrew word is keteb, Q-E-T-E-B, and is also known as a, a spirit. It means plague and destruction and other things, and but also it is a spirit. And so I pr- as soon as I prayed that out of him, I gave that to all our family. I didn't ask anyone else for prayer. We came together, believed in faith, and as soon as we spoke those words, they said, he's coming home. Uh, he's com- he, there's nothing wrong with him. He's coming home with oxygen. His oxygen levels stayed good, and they realized the oxygen they gave him at the hospital, he never, uh, they never turned on the oxygen. Oh. And his oxygen levels were good. And, and just to really wrap this up, the next day... I kind of told God, I said, well, I guess you showed us this so we could help other people be healed from COVID. And, um, uh, and this is the last part of it. The next day, you know, and, you know, be careful what you pray for, right? I, I, you hear, be careful what you wish for, be careful what you pray for. And, and uh, anyways, he started, you know, I, I got a call the next day from an old coworker who said, I have COVID. And I said, well, here's my, here's the testimony I have, and I'm going to pray for you this way, and as soon as I prayed for him, he said he got tons of pressure in his head, and then it left him. He passed out right after that, wakes up at 3 a.m. in the morning, he's healed. I talked to him the next day, I talked to him the next day, and (laughs) you couldn't tell he was sick at all. It was amazing. (laughs) Wonderful testimony. I think I'm done. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Thank you, Wyatt and Claudia and Mary, for the opportunity. Thank you. You're our African evangelist, or one of them anyway. Um, I'm glad you talked about 
basic principles of faith. Glad you talked about healing. We're going to put some of that into action right now. We got a uh, message uh, from Karen Goldman. She's a woman who we uh, traveled in ministry with in, uh, during the 80s and a very dear friend of ours, known her forever. Um, she's living in Florida right now, but her grandson is living in New Orleans. And um, her, her little grandson as being airlifted right now to a hospital because he has an obstruction in his intestines. Now, that sounds awfully serious, and in the medical realm it is, but I'll tell you, there's a key here. Um, when Aiden was born, that's, that's her grandson's name, when Aiden was born, he was born with his intestines outside of his body, and, uh, and God has already done some very significant healing and, and work on his intestines. Let me tell you a, a key uh, uh, that makes healing even easier easier than it already is by the uh, blood of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice at Calvary that he made. If you've seen God operate in the spirit uh, uh, to heal something in the past in somebody, that, that door is already open. And that good work that God has, has, has begun, he will see to completion. That's, that's his word. So if, uh, you know, uh, don't ever be afraid or scared or anything. If you see a, a situation, um, try and reoccur. Because that door of healing, that door of miracles, that's already been opened in the spirit. It's already um, prime to be to be addressed. And so this is the way I'm thinking about Aiden right now is that um, um, is is that by Jesus stripes, he is healed and made whole. And that obstruction that they are experiencing in the natural uh, in his intestines must go be healed, be cleared, be taken care of in Jesus name. Uh, we, we Obviously, we pray for the wisdom of the doctors and the nurses and the attendants because that's already in motion in the natural. But but we do know that uh, while God uses uh, the, the, the medical profession and, and, and doctors and nurses and stuff for good, um, we know that healing comes from him Amen. and him alone. And so, Father, we just thank you for Aiden, for a good report for him, even tonight, that these things would be cleared up, taken care of. Uh, Father, we just send comfort to Karen, to, uh, to especially uh, her daughter and son-in-law, to their family. We, 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 we comfort them right now with those words that says, by Jesus' stripes, Aiden is healed and made whole. We thank you for that, Father. We expect good news from New Orleans any time now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I also want to pray comfort for one of the church families, um, our, 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 our good friend, Juliana Ashford. Um, her, her son was, uh, was shot and killed last night. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, the last time we saw Levi, he was on a definite spiritual upswing. Um, it's been several weeks now, but uh, um, we, 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 we do know that, uh, that, that, that eternally, most especially, um, Levi is, was, is, and always will be in God's hands. But we want to release comfort. What a, what a horrible set of circumstances for anyone to face. We speak comfort. Uh, peace that passes understanding is what the Bible calls it. Peace that goes beyond uh, the mind's capability to relate and, and to process natural circumstances, peace that passes understanding. We, we, we release to Julianne and, and, and to her entire family, to, to, to the church, to everyone who, who knows them. Um, Father, our, our, our confidence is in you, and, uh, and, and we know that you are the victor of all things. And uh, we know that the restoration of all things is in your hands, and that, that, and the, and that Levi has already experienced that in Jesus' name. So uh, um, uh, we we just uh, we just want to keep her in prayer, her family in prayer. Don't know if we'll see her Sunday or not, but uh, um, if you do, be sure and give her a hug and 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 love on her and 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 just uh, hammer that peace home in her heart in Jesus' name, Amen. Um, Mary, you need to you need some time, and then there's just a couple of little things that I want to say uh, at the at the very end, just in the natural kind of announcements, very unspiritual. Okay. Yeah.
Thank you, Jesus. Eric, when um, you were testifying and saying how you needed deliverance, um, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I want you to know, and this is a word for you from God, Psalm 139. Do you know that psalm? I want you to read that psalm. It says that I, kn I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. Even before there were any days for you, I knew you, and I called you by name. I believe that part of the difficulty that you faced with addictions was feeling like you weren't wanted. God said, you're wanted by him. He loves you with everything that he is, and you are definitely wanted by him. He cares for you, loves you, and you're going to turn and be able to strengthen many, many people who are been addicted and have felt unwanted and unloved. You will be able to strengthen them. You will be able to help them understand that they're not alone in this world, that they have a God who loves them with everything that he is. And I also believe that for you personally, you're going to re regain some family situations that you lost. And even I don't know if you have children, I don't know what your situation is, but where you've been, you lost family who you're not in communication with, those things are gonna turn around and you're going to have them back again in your life. And uh, I just want you to know that when Art prayed for you and when those issues were dismissed, they really were dismissed and you're free in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord, amen. You are free, amen. And this one lady, you have a black shirt on, you, yes, ma'am. Would you stand up for a moment? I just felt like there was somebody in your family that you were standing in the gap for tonight. And maybe they're sick, or maybe they're just emotionally in big trouble. And so I want you to know that uh, as we extend our hands towards you and pray for them uh, through you, that you're going to begin to see a change in their lives. In Jesus' name, they're going to be set free in Jesus name and at first it might seem a little gradual to you but I'm telling you the momentum is switched and you'll be able to bring the testimony that things have changed in Jesus name you've carried this for a long time and God said that you don't have to carry it anymore he heard you he's heard and his response is yes and amen okay so you're going to see it you truly are and uh, you're a mighty woman of God. You really are. And someone who prays for people, helps people, encourages people. And uh, we, we speak over you the, a prophetic anointing that would come to pass to begin to give people words of encouragement and help them fulfill their destiny. But it's going to be okay, all right? You haven't believed God in vain. And you know that. But sometimes it just has been a long time, right? Bless you, in Jesus' name. Okay, Wyatt. I want to fix this a little later. Okay. Only two other things I wanted to mention. Um, we do have flowers over here. want everybody to uh, take some home if you'd like. Uh, they're free. We uh, get them from Trader Joe's every Friday. Um, and uh, uh, when, they, when they're going to get a new shipment and everything like that, we get a few of their, uh, their, their, their quality leftovers. So uh, anyway, be sure and take some flowers home. Also, we're going to have a work day here at the church tomorrow. We've, uh, we've made a big mess in the children's auditorium, the multipurpose auditorium. Uh, we have finally gotten that door actually installed back there. Um, there's still a little bit of work to do on the outside and everything like that, but um, that, that is coming. But we made a big mess in there by cutting uh, um, cinder blocks and stuff. We're going to have a little bit of a cleanup day tomorrow at 1 o'clock. It's just too much to clean for one or two people that usually do the cleaning around here and stuff like that. So um, if you have time, if you have the ability to come at 1, uh, we're going to have a few shop vacs. If you've got a great shop vac, Back, bring it, and uh, we'll we'll use it. Um, but we'll we'll take an hour or so. Uh, if if there's enough of us, shouldn't take too long to uh, sweep up back there and clean up and everything. So one o'clock tomorrow, a little bit of a work day here at church. And uh, otherwise, um, God bless you all. Art, thank you once again. Wonderful message. We love it. And uh, you are dismissed.
destruction, saved from sin, saved cause my Savior lives within. 